Hi everyone, Adam from Audience here, and today we're going to talk about the ID Mixer. We get a lot of questions here at Audience about how do I listen in real time to my microphones? How do I send specific sounds out of specific inputs? Because depending on the door you're using and the setup you want to use, it might be that you need to customize things to work in a way that is particular to you. So in today's video, I'm going to try and run you through how to do that with the ID4 and 14 and the ID24 and 44. Let's begin. Now, before we begin, I'm going to say that all of these interfaces, we highly recommend going to the audience website and downloading the drivers for your specific interface. Those include the ID mixer, and even on platforms like macOS, where you don't necessarily need drivers, we still highly recommend it for the best performance and the best possible options for changing what you need to be exactly the way you need it. First up, let's talk about the ID4, because the ID4 doesn't use the ID mixer at all and is relatively simple to use. So for the ID4 Mark II, there is the ID loopback mixer, but generally most of what you need from the ID4 is right on the interface. This has speaker outputs and headphone outputs, and those are the same. And there is a knob on the front which goes from input to DAW for the monitor mix. So all the way left, you're getting the microphone and the DI input in real time through the headphones and through the monitors. And all the way right is DAW only. So you're not going to hear the inputs at all unless you have them routed in software through your DAW and then through any kind of processing you like. If you have the input to the left, you won't hear any of the processing you're doing in a DAW because this is a direct input mixer that bypasses all of that. And if you go the other way, you'll hear it processed, but with the latency that gets incurred by processing through the DAW. The input gain is considered to be completely separate from that input mix. And then the volume control on the main scroll wheel is what you then hear out of your outputs. And again, is separate from what we consider to be the gain, which is what sets how your DAW records your levels. When using the monitor mix, the channels on the input can be panned left and right or they can be mono if you're just using one of the inputs and you want it to stay in the middle and not from one ear. The way to do that is hold down the two buttons on the front, the speaker and the ID, and then you'll see two LEDs come up here, and then you can use the scroll to pan that left or right or reverse pan or mono by using the LED strips here and using your ears. You can hear which is mono and which is stereo split. ID 14 and 24. Now we get into using the ID mixer and these are functionally the same in terms of the ID mixer. The key differences between the 14 and the 24 are the balanced inserts on the 24, as well as the additional eight channels of optical output. But there are still only two Q mixes in the ID24, same as the ID14, as well as the main master mix. Now let's plug one of these in. I'm gonna plug in the ID24, but if you were to plug in the ID14, you would see the same messages and windows on screen. Now this is the ID mixer that I have on screen here. This is the ID mixer for the ID14 and ID24. Now, before I even dive into this, let's look at the what if of what if I don't want to use the ID mixer and I want to send audio straight out from my door to outputs three and four, for example. This is something that I see commonly with, say, a band performing and they want something like a click track to come out of a separate output. The way that we would change that and some other functions is to go from the ID mixer into view and show system panel. 
This system panel, on the left here, we can choose whether the optical inputs and outputs are ADAT or SPDIF. Of course, the, uh, the ID14 doesn't have the digital output option. But then here we can choose the stereo output one and two to be the main mix from the ID mixer or alternate speaker, which is a one button change. Then we've got Q mix A and B, which we can choose and door through. Now it's the same on the headphones and the output three and four. The headphones are considered to be output five and six. The way that I tend to have things set up and the way that a lot of people tend to have things set up is the output one and two is the main mix and the headphones also duplicate the main mix so that as we change monitor outputs the headphones change at the same time even though the headphones have a separate volume level on the id24 and there is a headphone volume button on the id14 however if you wanted to change your headphone outputs to be a q mix you could select those to be qa or qb or as we were discussing earlier i might want three and four outputs to be door through. Door through then bypasses the ID mixer entirely for those outputs. And when we click that, we will get a warning message comes up that says that this could be loud because without going through the ID mixer, there is then no volume control in the audience software. And this will come out at whatever level your door specifies at zero dBFS. So loud, be aware that is entirely possible to be what you intend but if not we don't want you to blow up your speakers or damage your equipment so just be aware that volume level jump can be significant additionally with the id24 we have a tab here for digital outputs 1 to 8 which the id14 doesn't have now in this case i have the optical for 15 and 16 channels to duplicate the main mix and the rest are all set to door through so that if i define anything from pro tools logic cubase whatever i'm using to go out of these outputs say 9 10 11 12 they go straight through the optical without going through the id mixer now looking again at the id mixer this is currently set with everything visible which can be quite a lot to look at so Let's make this a little simpler. If we look at the top right here, we've got three buttons, mic, opt for optical and door. I'm going to click optical to hide the optical and door. And this now becomes much smaller and we can see inputs one and two. So currently we have mic one is down and mic two is up, which means that through our master mix or through our monitors or through our headphones, the way we have it routed, that microphone too would be coming out in near real time without going through the door in terms of monitoring. It would still register in your door as you wish. And these faders here do not affect the door in any way. These only affect what you hear through your chosen outputs. If your input isn't loud enough or is too loud, that would be using the gain knob in analog on the front of the unit to turn up and down the gain. That is very much what affects the recording level. If you want the appropriate recording level, you set the gain in analog. Then if it's too loud or too quiet for your headphones or speakers, you would then change the faders in the ID mixer appropriately. If I turn the big knob up here, that is turning up the output volume on the ID24 or 14. And that's also reflected in the LEDs on the front of the unit. If I was to then physically change the volume of that knob, you can see that moving on screen accordingly. Now, if I click on the door button to show those again, those were not disabled by me clicking those buttons. They were just hidden. Now, the door button shows me door one and two, three and four, five and six. Now for the master mix, I have chosen by default to have door one and two at full volume and three and four and five and six turned off. Now, if I wanted to have Pro Tools or Logic or whatever I'm using to send separate outputs out of separate channels, I could then blend those in here as necessary. And that is more relevant when we start talking about Q mixes. It may be that you have monitors where you have a level and a mix that you're happy with, but using a Q mix, you could have a singer in the next room, let's say on a couple of long cables, and they might only have door three and four if you've got an entirely separate mix set up and routed in your door. 
What you might want to do, however, and this could balance the microphone input and the door, is you might then have a mix that they like on one and two that you like, but then they might have more reverb that you might route separately to three and four, for instance. However you want to do this, that is entirely up to you. But these levels then mean that in real time, you can mix on the different outputs, however you see fit. And this is the same for Q mix A and B and the master mix to be set so that you can have them as you like. There's also the loop back function, which if you're streaming, you can do powerful things with. Also, if you have extra preamps coming in over your ADAP port, then we click opt to show the optical inputs. And now we have another eight inputs here, the digi one through eight. And so I can in near real time have those coming through the monitors or through the headphones so that they don't have to go through the door, through the latency, through the processing to be able to hear them. Now, if they are going through your door and then being monitored through the door, if you then bring up these faders at the same time, you might find that you're hearing it twice, once in near real time, then once later through the door. So you need to decide which one you want to hear. If you have processing going on in the door, like compressors, EQs, that are very important to what you're doing, then that is what you're going to have to do and listen through the door returns with that little bit of latency. But if you're happy to have them come through completely unprocessed, then you can have them come through the ID mixer. I do this quite often with things like guitar amp modelers where the processing is already done in that unit and I just want to hear it whilst recording with no additional latency. So that's how I would do that here. Now the ID44, easily the most powerful of the ID range, has all these inputs and outputs, including two sets of optical inputs, two sets of optical outputs, which have eight channels each, which when you add everything up, that's 44 channels, hence the name. And we have the option of four different Q mixes here. So there is an absolute ton that we can do. It's very much like the ID 14 and 24, but I'll cover the features again here. So when we plug in the ID 44 for the first time, we can see our four microphone inputs here. These faders are currently set for the master mix. They do not affect the input gain. They don't affect what gets recorded in the door. These only affect what you hear through the foldback. So if the level is too hot or too quiet in terms of input, we need to adjust the gain pots on the ID44 and also set the minus 10 dB pads if needed, high pass filters. That's all input, that is all before the ID mixer. The ID mixer's job is to root something from a source, whether it's the input or whether it is Pro Tools, Logic, Cubase, to where it needs to be in near zero latency. Let's look in the system panel. Let's say that I've got four analog outputs and two of them are going to monitor speakers and I want the others to go somewhere else with an entirely different mix that I have configured in my DAW, let's say in Logic or Pro Tools, however. And in that case, I don't want to use the ID mixer at all. In that case, I would go into the system panel here and routing and find the outputs that I want to have just bypass everything and then I would change their mode to door through. And in this case, it's going to warn me this could be loud because any volume control that you were using in the ID mixer before, that will be removed and the ID44 will output whatever you define from your door at up to full volume, which could blow your speakers or headphones. It might not, depending on your system and how you have it configured, just be aware that that is a possibility and to set your levels appropriately in the door instead of the ID mixer. I'm going to hit OK here. And now my output three and four are direct through. In my case, I've got some of the Q mixes here affecting the headphone outputs. What I could do is have, say, headphone one duplicate the main mix in ID mixer so that I have the same coming out of my monitors and headphones or I could have the headphones with their own mix, which is a Q mix. We have four Q mixes on the ID44, which means that we can have these to not only affect the main outputs, 
alternate outputs, headphones. We can also, up here on the digital outputs, have Q mixes that go out of the optical outputs as well. So we really have this expansive set of options here. So we can see 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We can choose these to either mirror the main mix or even the alternate speakers, which is a button that you can define, which is the main mix. But then when you press a button, it switches over. Uh, we can have any of the four Q mixes or door through mode. We can even have one of these Q mixes on the ID44 defined to control loopback, which is very powerful if you're, say, a live streamer. But we'll get back to that. So this is the ID mixer and this is the master mix. So it's a little complex. So let's take this down to something a little more simple. On the top right of the ID mixer, we can see mic, opt and door. And if we click on any of these, that will hide a particular source. So I've just hidden the optical inputs and the door just for now. That's not disabled them. That's not stopped the mix faders from doing what they do. That's just hidden them for simplicity of viewing. So if you can't see any of those and you need to change their levels, this is what you will find for opt and door. You will click them and that will reveal their controls to be changed as needed. Next to this, we have the choice of the master mix and the four Q mixes. If we click on any of these, that will change our settings. So let's say QC, I'll turn up all of the microphone inputs so that we will be hearing them in real time through Q mix C, wherever that is routed to. And then if I click master mix, those will go back down because this is a completely different mix. Quite often, I might have one or two microphones going live through the master mix so that I can hear them with near zero latency. The downside to that is that you don't hear any processing from your DAW. So if you're using things like compression, uh, EQ in your DAW and that's crucial to what you're doing, then you would really have to turn down these faders and make sure that in the DAW button up here with your DAW that you are monitoring that sound source through the processing through the door, which will incur the latency of your door, say Logic Pro Tools, whatever it is, but then will include that processing. Additionally, we can see here further down, we've got door one and two, three and four, all the way through to nine and 10. These door outputs, so the first 10 outputs from Pro Tools, Logic, whatever it is you're using, don't go straight out of the door by default. They all come into the ID mixer. They can be set, as we saw in the routing window, to go straight door through without the ID mixer, but you can also manipulate them here in the ID mixer. So, for example, you could have a main mix come out of one and two, but then maybe some extra reverb comes out of three and four, maybe a click track comes out of five and six. That way, when you've got a cue mix that's feeding something like headphones, if the artist then says, this is great, but could I have more reverb? We can turn up that one. We can have more click or less click. We can turn up that one independently of what you're hearing through your monitor system. So you don't have to get deafened by click whilst the singer or drummer or whoever it is that you're using has a really large amount of that. It also means that you're not necessarily having to do entire headphone mixes inside your DAW if that's not the way you want to work. This can be much more efficient for you. At this point, it is worth noting that some DAWs, like Logic for instance, will name the inputs and outputs numerically with no extra information, which is useful for us when using the ID mixer because we can send out of outputs three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and these will correspond to the DAW outputs we see in the ID mixer. However, some DAWs like Pro Tools and Reaper will name the output channels as expected if using DAW through mode. So you will see names such as Analog 1 and 2, SP Diff 1 and 2. These can be counted numerically to correspond to the ID mixer and Evo mixers channels on the outputs. Say so analog one and two would be analogous to door one and two. The ADAT one and two is the ninth and 10th outputs. So that would correspond to door nine and 10. Additionally, if we want to blend in the inputs from the optical inputs, the ADAT RSP diff as you have it set, if we click opt here, that's now showing us 
up to 16 digital inputs. I say up to because if it's SP diff mode, there'll be less. If it's running in 96 kilohertz, it would be half as many as in ADAP mode for 48K. But however many you have available are all presented here and you can turn them up to be fed into your mixes in near zero latency. And finally, I did mention Q mixes being used for loopback. So this is something that I do when I'm live streaming. I might use say QD because it's the last one there. And in the setup at the top, I would change set loopback source to QD. And now I can see the little LB sign has been assigned to QD. So now if I'm live streaming, I could have say my microphone, another musician's microphone, a couple of digital inputs, and I could have say door three and four and five and six being sent to a loop back to be sent either to someone on a Zoom call without sending something else that's the live stream out to them. I could then monitor the live stream separately and that gives me powerful control over sending certain things in real time to recording software or to third parties uh, without having to have yet another software mixer. Hopefully now you can see that the ID mixer is incredibly powerful once you get up and running with it. If you have any more questions, please let us know. We're always here to help. If you have any comments and suggestions, please leave them below. And if there's anything else that you want to look at, have a look at the Audient YouTube channel where we have more product videos, support videos, videos with people having a great experience with these products. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.